After completion of this part, you should be able to demonstrate knowledge and understanding about the background of the ISM code. While statistical analyses suggest that around 80% of all shipping accidents are caused by human error, the underlying truth is that the act or omission of a person plays some part in virtually every accident, including those where structural or equipment failure may be the immediate cause. Admitting that about 80% of all accidents at sea can be referred back to human errors it is only natural that the respective governments now focus on the causes for human errors. The ISM code provides tools, checklists, procedures, etc., to prevent human errors as well as technical failures. The Titanic disaster led to the SOLAS regulations. The Torrey Canyon disaster led to MARPLE and the STCW regulations. The Herald of Free Enterprise disaster led to the IMO A647 regulations. The Exxon Valdez disaster led to OPA 90. The Scandinavian Star disaster led to the ISM code. The Estonia disaster led to new technical and stability requirements. In the late 1980s, IMO realized the need for a system that could prevent accidents, injuries and pollution caused by poor management and human errors. Their work led to a new chapter in SOLAS, Chapter 9 of the ISM Code. The IMO A64716 Guidelines on Safety Management were adopted on the 19th of October 1989. The IMO A68017 guidelines on safety management were adopted on the 6th of November 1991. The IMO A74118 International Management Code for the Safe Operation of Ships and for Pollution Prevention was adopted on the 4th of November 1993. In May 1994, the ISM code was made mandatory in a new Chapter 9 of SOLAS. The Marine Safety Committee 63 and the SOLAS Conference decided on the 24th of May 1994 on a new Chapter 9 of SOLAS, which makes the ISM code mandatory for all ships above 500 gross tonnes, regardless of the date of construction, as follows. All passenger ships, including high-speed light craft, not later than the 1st of July 1998. Oil tankers, chemical tankers, gas carriers, bulk carriers and cargo high-speed craft of 500 gross tonnes and over, not later than the 1st of July 1998. Other cargo ships and mobile offshore drilling units of 500 gross tonnes and over, not later than the 1st of July 2002. The ISM code can be conceived as an umbrella to ensure compliance with rules and regulations for safe operation of the ship mainly in the area of safety design or equipment, human resources, pollution prevention. Match the book representing an IMO document with the relevant picture under the umbrella. The objectives of the code are to ensure safety at sea, prevention of human injury or loss of life, and avoidance of damage to the environment, in particular to the marine environment and to property. Safety management objectives of the company should, among other things, provide for safe practices in ship operation and a safe working environment, establish safeguards against all identified risks, and continually improve safety management skills of personnel ashore and aboard ships, including preparing for emergencies related both to safety and environmental protection. Thank <laughs> you.